exciting. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, I just really felt inspired by some of the similar to what uh, Ajita has been teaching us <laughs> about uh, dreaming big. Um, so, can you see the slides, everyone? Yep. Awesome. Yes. Uh, so, about daring to dream big. So as I was writing dream big, I felt, are we gonna dare to dream? Can we now start to dare to dream? And then can we dare to dream big? Okay, next slide, please. Okay, question for you. What is the dream or passion that Heavenly Father has put in your heart? I'd love you to have a think through while I'm going through this, uh, um, the next few slides and talking about the dreams and the big dreams. I'd really love you to just ask dad to, to bring to the forefront of your mind what dream or passion he's put within your heart. And it can be more than one. It doesn't have to be one. It can be more than one. OK, but just start to think from that point of view, because Proverbs 29, 18a says where there is no vision, the people perish. OK, so it is very important that we realize it's not that we don't have a dream. We all have dreams and passions that dad has put within our heart. That's part of the destiny that we're going to fulfill. All right. He's already put that within us. It's within our DNA. It's within our hearts. But it's just that sometimes it's got um, it's got lost kind of thing or it's, it's not in the forefront. And today we're going to uh, look at bringing that to the forefront. Can I have the next slide, please? OK, I'd like you to have a look at this because, you know, when we talk of dreams, we often talk of vision as well. And so I just want you to see that this is actually because the Bible verses, um, some Bible verses talk of dreams and some talk of vision. So I'd like to show you that it is the same thing. So when I looked up dream and I said similar words, as you can see, the third word on that first line says vision. OK, and uh, what I love is Look at that second line. To dream is to have ambition, to have aspiration, to have hopes, to have a goal, to have a design, a plan, an aim, an object, an objective. Um, it talks of goal, as I said. Um, it talks of uh, intention or a desire, a wish. Okay, and if you look at the verbs, talks of longing for something, hoping for something, daydreaming about something, desiring something, setting one's heart on something. This is what dream is, okay? It, and then if you look at that last line, it says to think of, to consider, to contemplate, to conceive, to entertain the thought of, and to visualize. Now, I put these words for a very big reason, because you'll be seeing through tonight, we'll be talking about vision, we'll be talking about visualizing, we'll be talking about um, dreaming. Uh, and I want you to see that these are all interchangeable and in line with each other. All right, because it'll make more sense. All right, next slide, please. A vision. Vision is the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. OK, vision is the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. A dream is a cherished aspiration or ambition or ideal. OK, next one, please. Now, before I go to these five steps, when I said, what is the dream he's put in your heart? I'm just going to give you a few examples, because while I'm going through this, I really like you to uh, ask the Lord to drop in your heart and bring, bring to the forefront if you don't already know what your dream might be. It might be a book. It might be kingdom songs like Ross does. Uh, and Ross, it doesn't have to be your only dream. There might be others, too. It could be a cause to set children and women free from being trafficked. Um, it could be to see changes in governing, in the government sector. It could be to influence the education system or the media system or the law system. 
There's so much. Our dreams become our purpose. Our passions become our purpose. Yes, Jano, you wanted us to go back to the last one? Okay, could we go back to the last one, please? The one before. Okay. Awesome, Dan? Thank you, yeah. All right, no problems. Um, could we go two forward, please, now? Oh, no, sorry, one back. <laughs> I'm playing with you, sorry. Five steps to accomplishing your dreams. I'm going to go through five steps. And uh, so number one is to imagine your dream. Number two is to write your dream. Number three is to visualize your dream. Number four is to speak your dream. And number five is to act on your dream. And there are scriptures for each of these, okay? Next slide, please. So the first one, imagine your dream. And this is the verse that has come up more than once today. Ephesians 3, chapter 20, uh, sorry, chapter 3, verse 20. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Isn't that awesome? The TPT version has brought in the dream, the wildest imagination. It's amazing. He is, he is there to do infinitely above all of this. That's what his promise is. Okay. So give yourself permission to dream. It, that is really important because sometimes we might think, oh, that's just daydreaming. No, it isn't. It's when you give yourself permission to dream, it's when you allow yourself to believe that God's put an amazing dream in your heart. And now you're beginning to say, dad, show me that dream. Show me all the facets of that dream. I already know you've put this in my heart, but I want to see all the facets of it. But if you, if you don't make time to dream, if you don't give yourself permission to dream, then you won't be able to pull out everything that's within there. Okay. Imagination should not be used to escape reality, but to create it. I saw this somewhere and I thought that is absolutely true and so perfect. Imagination should not be used to escape reality because, you know, we talk about imaginary friends and all of that kind of thing. And it has sometimes can have a bit of a negative connotation of being used to escape reality. But in fact, we should use imagination to create our reality. OK, uh, next slide, please. Actually, before I go through this uh, slide, I want to uh, give you an example of Walt Disney. Does everyone here know Walt Disney from, you know, who produced Disneyland? Right. So apparently he was uh, one of these people who um, would go to his boardroom with all his board members and he would throw out ideas and he would throw out an idea and he would say so do you think this is possible and if he said uh, if they said it's possible then he'd say okay forget it and then he'd throw out another one and uh, then he'd say do you think this is possible and they'll say Walt no one's ever done that before it's not possible and he'd say that's the one we're going to work on that's the one we're going to work on we're going to work on the impossible dream all right. And that's what we need to be like, because look at what he did. Look at what he did. And in fact, he died before that the the actual Disneyland got opened. He actually passed away. And somebody asked his wife, oh, wouldn't it be um, wouldn't it been really good if Walt was here to see this? And you know what she stood up and said? He did. He saw it in his imagination. And because he saw it in his imagination, he then brought it into reality, all right? So when we talk about imagining, that's where it starts and it's important. All right, number two is to write your dream. So as much as we imagine the dream and we bring it to the forefront of our mind, we then need to write our dream. Habakkuk 2.2a says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets. In those days, it was tablets. Today, 
please take a journal. Let's have a dream or a vision journal. Let Oh, yes, that tablet. Yes, you could have an Apple tablet too. <laughs> I guess we could go back to calling them tablets. Look at that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. So we can have a dream or vision journal, and that's really important. Why is it important? Because if we don't write it down and look at it from time to time, we are going to forget what we wrote. All right, so it is important to write it down, but also to revisit it from time to time. And it's important to write your dreams and visions under different headings. So remember the eight Christ-centered areas of our life that we talked about last year? How about writing a dream or a vision for each of those areas, for our family, for our um, spiritual life, for our partner, for our children, all the different areas. If we could write for our finances, if we could write our dreams or our visions for each of those areas, it's great because then we begin to talk about it. We begin to do take all the actions that I'm going to talk about today that will bring it to pass. If we don't write it down, we'll forget it. Next one, please. The next one is that we need to visualize your dream. Can I can I get you to look at the picture on the right hand side? I just love this when I saw it. It says, visualize this thing you want. See it, feel it, believe in it. Make your visual blueprint and then begin. Remember, we've been talking about blueprints. We've been talking about asking dad for the blueprints, for the visions and the dreams and even the words that he gives to us the, the ideas that he gives to us that we would begin to ask him for a blueprint so here it's talking about visualizing and you might say so what's the difference between visualizing and imagining so when we imagine something we are imagining a, 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 a it's almost like the big picture OK, but when we begin to visualize, we begin to go so much deeper. It's talking about seeing it, feeling it, believing in it, looking at all the details. A blueprint has all the details. All right. All the little details. And that's so important. We when we visualize our dream, we actually see the step by step process and the very littlest of details. And that's really important. So Isaiah 43, 19 says, for I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? He's asking us, do we not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. So once again, the impossible dream. Can we visualize the impossible dream? So we might think there's a wilderness. We might think there's a dry wasteland. We might think, how can this ever be, ever be possible? Well, start to dream it. Start to visualize it, okay? You can put a picture or a photo of what you are dreaming of under your written dream. So remember the journal that we're keeping? It would be great to put a picture or a photograph of what you're dreaming of. If you're dreaming of this house that you would like, put a picture of the house. Take, go to Google, download something and put it there. If you've got a car in mind, download it, put it there. If you're looking at changing the, the education system, for example, then find something there, find something that uh, shows that visualizes what it is that you want to change about the education system and put it there. It matters because you know, when we visualize things, when we imagine things, it's in pictures. All right. So when we put a picture there, we're actually seeing what we are wanting to see in the future, what the dream is. All right. And so that's why it's really important. You have to see your dream on the inside before you see it in reality on the outside, okay? It's important to see our dream on the inside before we actually mm -hmm. see the reality of it on the outside. Visualizing outcomes that you want can increase your confidence. So if you visualize it in here, it actually begins to uh, increase your confidence because it becomes possible. 
what seems impossible becomes possible. Seeing yourself succeed helps you believe that it can and will happen. Visualization helps you practice success. When you imagine every step of an event or activity going well, you get your mind and your body ready to take those steps in real life. So I heard of a story of a famous swimmer and I've his name's just missed my mind at the moment, but when I um, get it, I'll put it in the group if I have, if don't remember it before the end of this. But apparently before he would go, he, he won so many trophies. He was number one and he was out there. And bef what he would do is his coach would tell him to go and play the video of his success. And you know what the video of his success was? It was that he would go home and he would replay everything that he had played in, uh, he had replay everything that he had done in that particular competition or in the, in the practice that he had for the competition. And then he would replay it again, but this time the way he would have liked it to go every little bit, planning for every eventuality, that if someone happened to swim into his lane, what was he going to do about it? If his goggles broke off, what was he going to do about it? All of that right down to the end. And when, his, when he got into the pool, his coach would say to him just before he started the swim, remember the video remember the video and what the video was was just replaying in his mind the successful scenario the one that he had visualized over and over again and that really helped him so it's important to visualize what it is that you're dreaming of if you're dreaming if your dream is to set up uh, is, is to write a book let's take that for an example your dream is to write a book that would share kingdom uh, truths and kingdom revelations that would bless so many, then start to think about what you're going to be writing. Start to think about what all, all the areas that it's going to cover. Start to think about even what the cover is going to look like. Start to visualize it because imagination and visualizing is in pictures. Okay. Next. Um, slide please the next thing is to speak your dream and i love this that young boy over there with his with his cloak you know i know who i am is what i feel him saying you know he's got his hand out there and he's decreeing and he's declaring and job 22 28 says you will also declare a thing and it will be established for you so light will shine on your ways we need to speak our dreams. We need to declare our dreams and we need to make sure that we are making positive declarations. Remember that your negative words can delay the fulfillment of your dreams because we're negating what we are speaking. So we're declaring and decreeing the things that we want to see come to pass. But then if we stand there and say, oh, you know, sometimes we can get a little bit uh, disheartened or we might come across an obstacle and we'll say, oh, this will never work. Well, if we say that, then we've just negated everything that we have been declaring and trusting and believing for because our words have spoken. And remember, we have power of life and death in our tongue. And life and death is not just our life and death, but the life and death of our dreams, the life and death of uh circumstances and situations, the life and death of whatever we've been seeing and declaring. So we need to be aware of what we're declaring, what's coming out of our mouth. So some positive uh, declarations that could help, and I'll put these in the group later, is I'm a son, daughter of the king, okay? I am royalty. I'm an inheritor. I have the mind of Christ. I'm highly favored of God. I have been equipped with everything I need to fulfill my God-given destiny. Dad will download the blueprints I need. This is reminding ourselves and we're speaking it out. I have been designed to succeed. The favor of God is going before me and opening doors of opportunity. His favor will bring me into the room I need to be in and before the people I need to be in contact with. Okay, so if we begin to speak those things, those positive things over 
our dreams, then we will begin to get closer and closer to seeing them come to pass. All right, next slide, please. The final thing we need to do is act on our dreams. Okay, James 2, 17 says, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Okay, so faith without works is dead. We don't want to be doing dead works. So we're not striving to get it done. This is what dad has put in our hearts. So we are partnering with him to see it come forth. But if we don't put action to the faith that we have, then it is dead, okay? So what are some of the things we can do as action steps? We can ask Heavenly Father for wisdom and revelation regarding our dreams. We can ask dad for the blueprints, believe that he will download them to us and thank him, oops, I missed out an edge over there, and thank him for it, okay? So we can ask him for the blueprints, Believe that he will download it. <laughs> Thank you. He's fixing it up. <laughs> he will download them to you and thank him for it. Thank him because you're believing that it is done. Okay. So we're, when we ask him for things, we are believing that he's going to do it because we're asking him for the very things that he has put within our hearts. Then we can also do our research. All right. For example, if we're believing um, that we want to see some kind of change in, in one of the mountains of influence, like education or media or uh, in the area of law or any of those kind of things, we might need to do a little bit of research to see what's been done so far, what can be changed, how we're going to change it, who we need to meet with to be able to make these changes, all of those kind of things. It's just preparation. OK, because remember, if we uh, when opportunities come our way and doors open up before us, if it's too late to start preparing at that point, we need to be prepared so that when the doors of opportunity open, we can just walk through them. So, for example, if if our dream is to write a book, then we need to actually go back, sit down and start writing the book. Right. If it is to publish a book, then we need to start writing the book. We can't just sit there and say it's all going to get done for us. We know that dad's put that passion or dream in our hearts. So he's going to download the blueprints for the book. But we need to actually sit there and write the book. And that's the preparation part. And the part where when the opportunity opens up for our book to be published or for the book to be used in, in some area to, to bring change in that area, well, the book's ready. It's ready to go. OK, and that's where the preparation is. If we, we uh, if the dream is to write a song, then we need to actually start to write the song. We need to ask dad for the blueprints of the song. Um, if our if our dream is to go to another country and see change there and actually be the change there to bring some kind of change in there, then we need to apply for our passport if we don't have a passport. Do you see what the parts that we need to do are? It's about taking actions as if we are already doing it. We begin to praise him and thank him for those dreams even before they come to pass. That is faith, right? It's about um, the hope of things that we have not yet seen, right? And I love this on the right-hand side. Um, yes, it takes courage to act upon your dreams. It does take courage because sometimes the dreams are so big. But remember, if the dream is not big enough to, to scare you or to for you to turn around and say, oh, my gosh, that's too big for me, then, we're, then we can achieve it in our own strength. And we don't need God for that. But we need to believe for impossible dreams. We need to believe for those dreams because the dreams that dad's put in our heart are big dreams. They're not tiny. They're not tiny. They're big dreams, but they're not there to scare us in a negative way, but to, uh, to, to bring about the fact that, wow, this is so awesome. This is so big and it looks so impossible. But if dad's put that dream in my heart, then he's given me everything I require to be able to um, complete that dream. Amen. Next slide, please. 
So make your dreams a reality. Look at getting a goal setting workbook where you just sit down and write. So when we talk about goals, we're talking about not just goals that are, um, you know, that are just out there, but it's actually the dreams that we set up as goals because we need to start working towards them. And remember last year we talked about goal setting and how we need to make them smart goals. So we need to make sure that they're measurable, that they're all the different areas that we need to make, um, make sure that we're following so that we actually reach those goals, okay? Because if we have um, vague goals or if we have vague dreams, that's what we'll get. Okay, what we expect is what we'll get. So if we want to see those dreams come to reality, then we need to put down some goals around them and we need to begin to visualize them. We need to begin to see and to speak out and to, first of all, to imagine them, then to, um, to be able to uh, write them down, then to visualize them, to speak them out and then to take action on them. Next um, slide, please. Dream big, set goals, and take action. That's really important. And the last slide, which I love, is that you are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. Because sometimes we might say, oh, I wish I'd known this years before. But C.S. Lewis said, you are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. Amen. So let's start dreaming today. Let's start dreaming today. That's it for the presentation. What was the previous one again, um, Rebecca? That the three the things one just before was to okay. could we put that um, one back? Two one two slides before. Three things, yeah. The yeah, one before. Yeah, yeah. Dream big, set goals, and take action. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Take action. Wonderful. Okay, we can take that down now. Thank you. Thanks, Pastor Ruben, for being my slide putter. <laughs> Uploader, thank you. Awesome. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. And I, I it, it must not stop here. So between this week and next Wednesday, what I'd really love us to do is to actually sit down, sit down with Dad, and ask him to bring to the forefront of your memory and your heart one to three dreams. Now, if you only come up with one dream, that's all right. One dream, one passion, no problems. If you come up with two, that's great. If you come up with three, that's wonderful. If you come up with more than that, that's okay. But start with one. At least get one because next week we're going to work on those. We're going to start to look at them in more detail because you know what? One of the things that we've always talked about with discipleship is if it's just information and we don't do anything about it and there's no processing, then it, there will be no transformation. Okay. And this is not something about just information. We want to see it come to pass in our lives. Amen. How many of us want to see our dreams come pass yes for those who have got their cameras on i can see the hands for those who haven't got your cameras on um yes if you could put an emoji or if you could put in the chat group the word yes that would be great wonderful so i think thank you for those who are putting it in the group as well so i think all of us would love to see our dreams come to pass well there is a way that we can see it come to pass but we <clears> need to take the steps okay so Love you to get a book by next week, uh, a journal, and write in one to three or more dreams. If you can put a dream, at least one dream, in every area of the, the eight Christ-centered uh, areas, that would be great. But if you can't, don't worry, at least one dream.
because the Lord has put something within each of our hearts. And that is what we talk about, his will, his destiny for our lives, his purpose for our lives. How we do it, how we carry it out will be different for each and every one of us. As, we, as we've said before, we have different platforms, different um, groups of influence around us, but it's the same for all of us that there is a plan, there is a purpose, and there is a destiny. Remember, we've been saying in our declarations, we are here on purpose for a purpose. Amen. Like um, Superman coming down to uh, Earth uh, for a purpose. It's the same thing with us. We've, we have come from heaven as ambassadors, right? We're here as sons, knowing our inheritance, knowing who we've been sent by for a purpose and let's now discover what that purpose is and start moving into it because we've been talking about that today we've been talking about taking up our positions well taking up our positions we've got to know what we're wanting to do what it is that dad's put within our hearts so that we can begin to start taking those positions okay awesome love to hear some comments and some feedback and questions please feel free for some questions um, 